is today the most valid uh, tool to even to build a buckle plate and preserve it. And the difference, Dr. Binderman, is that the step of partial or short-term demineral demineralization, that's the, yes. that's the difference. Yes. And that has a better chance as opposed yes. to complete demineralization. Yes. Okay. You will have also the particles will also stick to each other. Okay. Now, our time is almost up, but I have so many questions for you. So maybe we should do a part two. I, I would love to have another conversation, but maybe to finish off, is there an advantage of mixing the dentin graft with PRF? Yeah, it, it is an advantage. You know, you take two golds, you mix it together, they mix very well, mm -hmm. okay? If you take another metal and you mix with gold, it's not the same, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, of course, each one, because we, if you want to attract uh, the, the dentin in, with immediate uh, or a short-term uh, inflammatory phase and go to the regenerative phase, because we have to understand and that there is an interaction between the macrophages, the regenerative macrophages, and the young cells because the regenerative macrophages bring blood vessels hmm. surrounded by perivascular, some call them pericytes. They are very active in producing bone in the bone environment, okay? So when you have your PRF, PRF also is making sticky bone, which you call, so you can mold it here. So if you want to make a buckle plate, in a, in a geometry that you need, it also help, helps you very much. Okay. Okay, Dr. Binderman, this was an, an amazingly valuable conversation. Thank you so much. In about uh, half an hour, we talked about uh, so many important topics, uh, like the importance of the free gingival margin in the papilla in the regenerative potential of our sockets. Uh, we talked about... Uh, you know, why does the buccal plate resorb so much versus the lingual and the, and the uh, palatal plate, uh, which are more uh, basal, uh, more basal bone? We talked about the advantage of dentin grafting. And for me, the highlight really of this conversation, except for reuniting with you after 25 years. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> my highlight was the M2 macrophage. And now in our mind as dentists, as practicing dentists, we think about macrophages as evil. And, right. <laughs> and, and, and now, we th now in, in that sense, and uh, converting the M1 into M2 uh, sounds like that is going to give us a lot of hope. So on that note, uh, Dr. Binderman, thank you very, very much for your thank you. uh, precious time and allowing me to have this conversation with you. I know we'll talk. Uh, many times more. Uh, I'll keep using the dentin graft. I'll keep posting cases and keep educating dentists all over the world on what we can do with socket grafting. Uh, any final words uh, to dentists all around the world? Well, I, I would say there is no one technique, okay, in my experience. I would put it this way. I had the opportunity to do both basic science and clinical work. And being one of the pioneers of implantology, was a, I started at the time that at the same time I worked at the Weizmann Institute in very basic problems of bone formation. As a matter of fact, we were the first to show bone formation culture. And by the way, I have a paper with the, with the one of our scientists, uh, Katsir, mm -hmm. who was also the president of Israel, Ephraim Katsir. Okay. <laughs> one of the first papers, by the way. Sure. But the message is that you have to take all the time to take, to learn from 
the research, bring it to the clinic, and the clinical, real, real clinical questions, how we can answer them. It's very tough, but we learn every day more and more. And of course, not only then from other research, we learn how we can also implement it in, in the clinical work in the other. I don't believe in research just for ah fun. I like the research that can answer some clinical work. And this is what I enjoy to doing it. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to talking to you and seeing you again.